Live from Case at 12, the night beat starts right now. This is a scam. This has to be a scam because all these people had similar stories to mine. Several customers say a local business took them for a ride, leaving them out tens of thousands of dollars. The defenders investigate. She began as a stranger and ended up like family. A nurse's extra efforts created a lifelong connection with some of her patients. We were there for a heartwarming reunion. And a devastating fire leaves a mother and her three children living out of suitcases. She shares what it's been like to be without a home and all of their belongings for days now. Our top story tonight, a suspect now behind bars accused of shooting at officers who were inside of their patrol unit filling out reports. Yeah, we first told you about this developing story this morning on GMSA. The suspect speaking to our crew as officers walked him to a squad car this evening. Take a listen. I just shoot at officers. I didn't. They got the wrong guy? Do you have something against officers? No, I want to be one. That is 22 year old Tyler Ashbaugh. He is accused of driving up to a parked SAPD patrol unit and shooting at them around 2:20 this morning over on the northeast side. Neither of those officers were hit. One of them able to fire back, hitting the suspect's vehicle. The suspect got away, but Ashbaugh's vehicle was later found at a home on Buckmore near Thousand Oaks and O'Connor Road. That was a relative's home who gave police the suspect's address where they were able to take him into custody. It's very disheartening. These officers were just there uh, writing their police reports when this individual, for who knows what reason, decided to take a couple shots at them. Uh, for, for, I can only think because they are police officers. They're Detectives later found a gun in Ashbaugh's home that matched the caliber of bullets fired at officers. They also spoke with two witnesses, giving them enough probable cause to arrest Ashbaugh for assault on a peace officer. A man is in jail tonight after allegedly impersonating a, a police officer and burglarizing a home. Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar using the frightening incident as an opportunity to remind the public what they need to look for when it comes to identifying someone in law enforcement. Sometimes it's as simple as asking for proof. Do you have anything you want to say to the alleged victim in this case? A very different view of 38-year-old Salvatore Alfieri than the pictures posted by Bear County Sheriff's Office today. According to Sheriff Javier Salazar, Alfieri is accused of impersonating a police officer and burglarizing a home on the far west side while wearing a ski mask and police tactical vest. He claimed to be with San Antonio Police Department. He claimed to be an officer that needed to do some sort of probation check uh, and indicated that he needed to do a search for contraband in the house. Alfieri was armed and once inside, he allegedly threatened the woman there. The sheriff says he made her give him cell phones and a large sum of cash before leaving. Her surveillance video captured him clearly, leading BCSO to identify him. A post by the sheriff's office Sunday led to helpful tips that Alfieri was at an intersection on Roosevelt Avenue waiting for a lift. SAPD actually got to the location before we did. They were able to perform a traffic stop on a ride chair that he had just gotten into. Salazar says even when law enforcement is undercover, they typically arrive in teams of two. You can also ask to see their identification if you'd like to confirm they are who they say they are. If you've ever got somebody that approaches you in plain clothes and is trying to pass themselves off as a law enforcement officer, ask to see this, and this is something that we will we will show you, and it will help in, in identifying them for sure. When it comes to Alfieri, Salazar says it's important he's off the streets. The information that we were developing is that he was, he was desperate for money, and so the concern obviously was that he was going to do it again, and maybe the next resident wouldn't be so fortunate and something bad would happen. Alfieri is facing several charges, including impersonating a peace officer and burglarizing a habitation with intent to commit a felony. He could be facing additional charges. Salazar said he lied to SAPD officers who arrested him and he was in possession of marijuana and meth. Hopping from hotel to hotel for more than a week, that's been the life of a single mother of three whose home recently burned down. As the night team's John Paul Barajas reports tonight, that mom now burning through money to keep a roof over her kids' heads. Say we lost everything. Um, looking at the house, it just, it's just, I don't even have words for it. Like, I want to start crying, but I'm on camera. This is a scene Ajanique Williams and her three kids came home to on May 12th on the 8,000 block of Chipping Drive. Numerous fire crews putting out hot spots on what little was left of her home. 
She and her neighbors' houses both deemed total losses. Everything you can think of, birth certificate, material stuff we can always get back, but sentimental value stuff we can't. When you have a baby, they give you that bracelet on their foot, that sonogram, my baby's trophies, his rings. The fire forcing the single mother to start from scratch, and for nearly two weeks, this is what she's had to do to survive and provide for her kids. Spending money that we don't have and that we didn't expect to spend, we've been room to room. Um, Having to go buy clothes like clothes every day and Williams has a 14, 11, and a six-year-old. She estimates she spent close to a thousand dollars and is trying to take everything one step at a time to get back up on her feet. But even amid all the chaos, the daily duties of a mom are still there. I'm getting him back and forth to school and he's in sports, so he practiced Monday through Friday, balancing stuff out while going through this. They have to stay in school. They're in school. They're gonna go to school every day. No matter what we got going on, they have to finish school. My goal. Now, we were able to get Williams in touch with the Red Cross. She says she hasn't been able to get assistance just yet, but she has found a hotel with a stovetop. She hopes that'll help her cut back on spending. She'll be able to cook food instead of having to go out and buy it. As for the cause of the fire, Bear County fire officials say that's still under investigation. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Thanks, John Paul. The Bear County Medical Examiner's Office is still working to identify a man found shot and killed on the west side. Tonight, another man who was also at the scene is still recovering in the hospital. The shooting happened around midnight today on San Ignacio Avenue and Riva Street. When police arrived on scene, they found a man lying down in the front yard with a gunshot wound to the face. He was taken to the hospital and then a few feet further, Police saw a stopped vehicle and the 28 year old man dead. They had big dreams of living a simpler life, selling their homes to live in old school buses converted into modern RVs. But several customers who hired a San Antonio company to do the work now say those dreams have become a nightmare. We wanted it done right. That was the reason we went there. We wanted it done right without concern for safety for our family. And the sad part is, Electrically, it's a death trap. Austin-based photographers Zach and Taryn Marks hired Lone Star Schoolie Conversions to install air conditioners and storage space on their bus, but after weeks of delays, the couple threatened to pull their bus before it was finished. They say business owner Ben Potts promised to make things right and added more solar panels. When the Marks finally got their bus, they say it was full of mistakes and potentially deadly electrical hazards. Do you even feel safe living in this thing, plugging it into electrical at this we point? We don't. No, we have no. not plugged it into electrical. They're not alone. The defenders have identified more than 20 customers who say they didn't get what they paid for and they haven't had much luck trying to get their money back. Coming up tonight at 1030, you'll hear their horror stories and the business owner's response in a brand new defenders investigation. Some much needed help for those parents dealing with the baby formula shortage has arrived on U.S. soil. Operation Fly Formula bringing in 78,000 pounds of baby formula from Germany. The specialized formula will go to babies who are allergic to cow's milk protein. The administration saying another flight with more formula will arrive in the U.S. later this week. Officials say this shipment has enough product to make 500,000 eight ounce bottles of formula. Data shows the formula shortage is worsening nationwide. An average of nearly 45% of baby formula is out of stock. We are just two days away now from the 2022 Texas primary runoff elections. A key race we'll be keeping a close eye on that affects our area is the race for Bear County Judge, former District Court Judge Peter Sakai, going up against State Representative Ina Menjares for the Democratic nomination. Whoever wins that race will face off against Republican nominee, former County Commissioner Trish DeBerry. We'll also be watching the races for Texas Attorney General and Congressional District 28. Right now we have a sample ballot available online before you vote. Also online, an article that breaks down everything you need to know like how to vote, polling locations, and what you need to bring. The Texas primary runoff election this Tuesday, May 24th. Polls open from 7 a.m. and stay open until 7 p.m. Summer activities are in full swing. Yesterday, it was several city-run city public pools opening up. Today, it was a splash pad at Morgan's Wonderland. It will op operate now until Labor Day. As always, their motto is to be accessible to all. Their splash pad includes waterproof wheelchairs, but that's not all. The 
one that we're standing right now is Rainbow Reef, um, which is a warm water splash pad for those that have um, sensory to the cold um, water. Um, so it's an enjoyable place for not only the kiddos, but the adults as well with the seahorses behind me. The adults like having the water splashing on their back. So fun for everybody. She said it, fun for everyone. Morgan's Wonderland even offers wheelchair valet to make it easier for guests to transfer out of their personal wheelchair to maximize the fun. Hey, even though it was a little cooler today, it's never really a bad day to go to the splash pad, that's for sure. I hope you were able to enjoy today's cooler weather. Yeah, we weren't reaching for the jackets, but in a lot of spots this afternoon, high temperatures were some 10, 15 degrees lower than they had been on Saturday. Our high temperature at the airport this afternoon, 86. That's actually a couple degrees below average for this time of year, so we're trending away from the record heat, not just for today, but also for several days in the week ahead. That drop in temperatures back to near and below normal comes along with continued chances of rain. So if you didn't get all the rain you wanted last night and the pre-dawn hours of this morning, don't worry, you've got several opportunities in the days ahead. Scattered thunder showers possible on Monday, isolated activity Tuesday, and then another scattering of rain on Wednesday. We'll talk more about what the next few days have in store coming up in the full forecast. Still ahead on the night beat, a new generation of vaccines and COVID treatments could be on the way. How this could help us against any fall or winter COVID surges. Plus, a local business accused of ripping off customers all over the country. How the owner responded to his former customers' claims. It's a brand new Defenders investigation at 1030. Born from tragedy, a lifelong bond between some new parents and their labor and delivery nurse. Hear their story of child loss that shows the power of nursing. A life-changing, full-circle experience with a patient led a labor and delivery nurse to write about it for National Nurses Week this month in the Methodist Health Systems magazine. Courtney Friedman saw the column and, well, she just had to meet them. Their story and their connection goes to show how important a nurse can be in a patient's life and how, in this case, strangers became family. Parenting. It's the most rewarding, <laughs> exhausting um, job there is. Devin and Shelton Aguilar Ma came to meet us with their adorable one year old son, Knox, in tow. Hey, the camera. But he's not the only child in their family. We got pregnant on the first try with an IUI, um, and so we were over the moon ecstatic. Around 18 weeks, a scan showed Devin had no amniotic fluid, and by 19 weeks, she had an infection. They had to deliver a baby they knew had not survived. This is the first time that I had to interact with somebody who had lost a baby. It was just such a pivotal moment for me as a nurse. Kayleen Cortez was Devin and Shelton's labor and delivery nurse at Methodist Hospital in May of 2020. And with the pandemic prohibiting family to visit, she became their support system. I walked in and she had like a huge Harry Potter blanket. And I just remember like just being so relieved that I was like, okay, we at least like can talk about something. What do you say to somebody who just like lost this baby that they wanted so badly? Harry Potter is my jam. And so I showed her my little Deathly Hollows tattoo. Kayleen then helped deliver their baby girl. Our daughter's name is Polly. I just wanted it to do something special for them because we had made this connection. And so I just remember that quote from Harry Potter. Kayleen printed out the quote, Happiness can be found even in the darkest of times if one only remembers to turn on the light. I did handprints and footprints on there for them. And to me, it was just something that was just a small gesture. But to Devin and Shelton, it was so much more. That's actually how we announced. I guess the birth of her um, was taking a picture of that. She has it like framed on her mantle that they like show it to everybody. That and my picture and they tell everybody about me. Fast forward 10 months, Devin pregnant with Knox and was having a preterm labor scare at 30 weeks. We walked in, I was like, you know, is, is there a nurse that works here named Kayleen? She was like, yeah. I was like, is she working by chance tonight? She's like, oh yeah. All of a sudden, a door like bursts open, I swear. <laughs> and Kayleen's like, oh my gosh, and just comes and we just start crying together. Kayleen helped deliver Knox, who was healthy, but had to be rushed to the NICU for precaution. And we're leaving her, yeah. following him, like, but I knew she had Kayleen to watch over her. Like I've never um, expected to have that kind of connection in nursing. Now, reunions like this are common. Hi. Hi. 
a full circle experience showing the true power of nursing and the ripple effect of making genuine human connections. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. And that's a story to make you smile. Don't worry, Tim. I'll share my tissues with you. <laughs> Devin and Shelton want people to know it's okay to talk about the grief of losing a child. They incorporate Polly in their lives as much as possible. Polly was actually born during Nurses Week, so on her birthday every year, they deliver gifts to nurses at the hospital to show gratitude for the important work they do every single day. A great story and uh, a good reminder to thank all of those nurses out there every day who work so hard for us through everything that they deal with over the last couple of years and mm -hmm. every day when they just go to work. We thank you guys so much. Absolutely. And we also thank Mother Nature for flipping on the old AC today. There we Katie. go. This is beautiful. Oh my gosh, it felt so great out there. A north wind in place behind the front that moved through overnight. Just felt like a totally different place today. And again, I hope you were able to enjoy it. We'll start to get hot again, but we've got a few days before the heat really starts to get cranked back up. In fact, the focus for the next few days is going to be on continued chances of rain. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday offer more chances of rain, yes, but also for storms and even some severe storms. Uh, first shot at that will come tomorrow on Monday, especially later in the day. A little bit of a lull Tuesday, and then we pick back up with more storms with severe potential on Wednesday, and we'll get into all of that very shortly. Want to show you again high temperatures today across the area, 86 at the airport. I mean, it was warm, but it wasn't terribly muggy, and we had that nice northeasterly breeze. Really a pretty pleasant day. And again, this is where our temperatures should be this time of year. We were so far above average to even get them down back to where they should be was a big treat. 82 currently in Catula, 77 Kennedy, 75 New Braunfels, also 75 in Rock Springs at 74 Canyon Lake, 74 Rio Medina. Pretty comfortable out there this evening. We've got mostly clear to partly cloudy skies, kind of a mixed bag of cloud cover out there today, but there's more high cloud cover as you go west of 281 and west of I-35. But as far as any rain or storms go tonight, things are pretty quiet across Texas, but that will change as we get into the day on on Monday, our weather pattern remains unsettled for the next several days and all of these little blips of red and orange. Those are pieces of rain making energy or lift in the atmosphere, and we have to have that in order for showers and thunderstorms to a develop and b sustain themselves over a period of time. And what you're going to see over the next three days, are these little pieces of rain making energy kind of filter in and out over Texas through the middle of the week. So when you see these rain chances, just know it's not going to be raining all day every day, but we will have periods of rain and even storminess over the next three days. Uh, first up will be tomorrow and tomorrow night, and I'll show you future cast here in just one second. Now over the next three days through Wednesday night, Here's a look at rainfall potential. This is pretty good, um, and this just kind of gives you a broad idea of what we're looking at in terms of rainfall. Anywhere you see the darker purple color, that's two plus inches of rain again over the next three days. So keep in mind that this will be spread out uh, from now until Wednesday night uh, across the hill country. One to one and a half inches there again where you see that purple color one and a half to two inches, the darker purple color two inches plus and then some spots up northeast of San Antonio closer to the Brazos Valley could see more than three inches. So uh, not a total drought buster for us, but it's likely to really help. So let's talk about Monday as far as the severe weather potential goes. We do have a higher risk for some scattered severe storms around San Antonio up to Comal County, New Braunfels and along 90 West out to Del Rio, south and east of San Antonio, isolated severe storms possible. The reason why there's a slightly higher risk of severe weather in that darker pink color north and west of San Antonio is because storms will originate out to the west tomorrow afternoon and then move east. So I don't want you to stay married to these particular timestamps on future casts. I just kind of want you to get an idea of how things will play out tomorrow. By the afternoon, we'll look out to the west for some storms to develop, and then they will move east across the hill country along the Highway 90 corridor to I-35 and 281. They could start to approach I-35 and the 281 corridors as early as about sunset, maybe even a little earlier than that. We'll just have to watch how these storms blossom and develop tomorrow afternoon, and then we'll get a more precise timing idea for you. But just know later in the day Monday, that's when we start to up the rain chances. We very well could be done with a lot of the action 
overnight Monday into early Tuesday morning before we pick up rain. Early evening, they'll be highest in the evening and nighttime hours. Temperatures tomorrow start near 70 in the afternoon, mid to upper 80s for your high temperatures. We don't get back into the 90s until Friday, guys. All right, Katie, thank you. Mm -hmm. Simmons will join us with a preview of Instant Replay right after this. An exclusive sit-down interview with Texas A&M head football coach Jimbo Fisher that includes new information in his feud with Alabama head coach Nick Saban. Let's find out all about that and what else is on Instant Replay with our Greg Simmons. Greg, this was an interesting interview. It got a little testy at times, yes, I'll tell did. you that. All right, And our San Antonio Spurs now have three picks for the first round of the NBA draft, including a top 10 pick. Coming up tonight on a brand new edition of Instant Replay. I'm at, I, I did, just hold on. I ain't getting into this. Oh, no, no, no. I, I understand, but I just wanted... Is this change? It's, it's because social media and media put it out. I got it. That's Texas A&M head football coach Jimbo Fisher, our exclusive interview with brought new information with him to San Antonio from College Station to refute his former boss's Nick Saban's accusation that the Aggies bought every player in the nation's top recruiting class. This is something you don't want to miss. As for the Spurs, they've sent two-time NBA champion first pick in the 1987 draft, the Admiral. It's David Robinson. Former number one draft pick David Robinson in Chicago last week as the Spurs land the number nine overall pick in the upcoming NBA draft. What does the Admiral think of the Spurs having three first round draft picks? Final seconds. Doncic, the bump in the pool, firing good if it goes. And can the Mavericks pull out their first win in the Western Conference Finals as the best of seven series shifts to Big D for game three tonight? All that plus who wins the PGA Championship in Oklahoma had to go to a playoff. And did the Aggies do anything wrong in signing the best recruiting class in the nation? Instant replay is live and it's after the night beat. Guess that depends on who you ask. Yes, it sure does. <laughs> I you. found out. It sure we'll, does. We'll look forward to that interview, Greg. Thank you. Still ahead, what should have been a simple bus conversion is causing big time controversy. The many unhappy customers speaking out and the business owner's response. Preparing for the surge before it arrives, that's what the Biden administration is trying to do with the next generation of vaccines. What this means for you. Where we have this house we're not even been at because we've been driving all over the place. Why don't we get a bus? Selling a home to live in an old school bus may sound like a strange thing to do, but it's a growing trend as couples and families search for more freedom by living on the road. Converting those old buses into mobile homes is becoming a big business. And over the past five months, the defenders have found customer after customer who say they hired a local bus conversion business who they claim took them for a ride, both emotionally and financially. It's tonight's Defenders Investigation. <laughs> We gave him $75,000 total. It was going to be a $100,000 bill. Jim and Trudy Krupaki hired Lone Star Schooly Conversions to make this bus their home on the road. But their dreams soon took a wrong turn. So yeah. this, this has left you all financially wrecked. Yeah, it, it has. It has completely changed the trajectory of the, of what we had built on for years to for ourselves. They say business owner Ben Potts told them he'd have their bus finished in six to eight weeks. But when the couple came to pick their new home up in August last year, it wasn't done. They then found themselves living out of hotels as the weeks turned into months. I mean, it was like being in a toxic relationship with no end. Finally, in November, Potts told them the bus was finished, but we knew it was a mess even though Ben was standing right in front of us telling us our bus was worth $100,000. I mean, if you look at this, it looks like a, a junior high project. Ross Taylor is a schoolie expert. He was shocked by the condition of the Krupaki's bus. The tile is just attached directly to plywood. It'll pop loose here pretty soon. He found all kinds of problems. This wasn't attached to anything, so if they'd used the toilet, the urine would have run out on the floor. His biggest concern, the number of electrical hazards he discovered, some of them potentially deadly. There are things done in here that a first week apprentice electrician wouldn't do. Up here, there's a 30 amp circuit breaker with 12 gauge wire. 
and 12 gauge wire is only rated to handle up to a 20 amp circuit breaker. So that's a, a fire hazard. And then there was this. If you do an internet search for suicide cable or widowmaker cord, you'll find this. So this plugs into the generator and this plugs in here. When this is plugged into the generator, these are live. And that's why it's called a, a suicide cable. You touch that, you're... Yeah, yeah, you can't buy these because they're not safe. I mean, they're super dangerous. The defenders have identified more than 20 customers who say they didn't get what they paid for. A rainstorm hit on the way home and we found out that the bus was completely completely leaking and every single weld they did pretty much water was pouring through the bus he still owes me twenty seven thousand. um i don't have a bus we got there and nothing had been done our bus had not been moved not been touched zach and taryn marks got fed up dealing with all the delays and pulled their bus before it was finished but not before they say Ben Potts offered to make things right by adding more solar panels with extra materials he had. This is what his extra solar laying around was. All different wires, different ages, not the gauge they're supposed to be for that circuit running through them. They say they're now out $15,000 and will need to pay even more to fix the damage Lone Star Schoolie caused. So right now you're at Lone Star Schoolie headquarters. Okay. And here is where all the magic comes through. Ben Potts invited me to his warehouse to see how he operates. So what, what happens is we actually cut the entire bus front to back and we raise it anywhere from about 10 to 22 inches. But when we questioned him about his many angry customers, the answers didn't come easily. Uh, what, so what's the, I'm sorry, I, I'm, uh, can you, one more time. The buses that we've seen have been described as death traps, fire hazards, accidents waiting to happen. If there was anything like that, we'd be on it and we will, we'd love to fix that. He blamed most of the problems on a former contractor. And I started contracting out a couple of builds because we started getting very busy. And we noticed that every single one that he touched are the ones that are upset. He also blamed his customers, saying they're out to get him. So you feel that these people are damaging your business? They've, they've destroyed my company. Potts did eventually take some responsibility, admitting he took on more customers than he could handle, which resulted in the subpar work. He says he will now pay to have the buses fixed or give customers full refunds. We're not going to let anybody go without at least being refunded back or helped or it's spoken to directly. But this customer says it's all lip service. My bus was delivered mid-December and we're now in May and it's been the back and forth. Oh, we're going to fix it. Oh, we're going to do this. Oh, we contacted this person to fix it. Air Force veteran Lauren Doherty was horrified when Lone Star Schoolie delivered her bus. So there's like no windshield were, whatsoever. No, this it's completely cracked. Was the guy driving it like that? Yeah, and it fell in on him. Also, the floors were rotted out. This is the old bus floor. That's the mold and rust. On top of it, when Doherty checked the title, she says she learned the bus had been flooded, something she says Potts never disclosed to her. And even worse, he also jumped the title, so it was never transferred into his name. He doesn't, own, so I have to get a bonded title. She also says she was contacted by another Lone Star Schoolie customer who paid for a bus they never received. That customer had the exact same title as Doherty. And so they went that whole time not knowing that their bus was sold out from under them. So we asked Potts and about it. That uh, particular client I can't talk about um, due to litigation and due to actual police reports. But he says he's paying that customer back. So the bus refund was given and then we're actually still on a, a plan with them refunding the rest of the build as well too. So you're paying them back as, as you speak? Yes sir. In no way would we, that's stealing. I filled out the small, yeah. Doherty came to San Antonio two weeks ago and filed a lawsuit in small claims court. You know, if I can do something about it to make sure that somebody else isn't hurt, whether or not I get my money back is, is minuscule in the, in the larger scheme of things. She was joined by Joe Baker, an Army veteran who's suing Potts for taking $15,000 but not doing any work on his veteran outreach bus. He has a court date on June 7th. This is criminal. He is taking people's money and not providing a service and or just blatantly just ripping people off. So we got some water coming through here. We got some cooking. 
They can take place? Actually, Potts has not been charged with any crime. Despite all the troubles he's facing, Potts is still converting buses, and he says doing it even better. And he's now hoping to win back customers. We're going to get their money back to him. We're going to take care of them. We're not going to leave nobody high and dry. But his former customers say they don't believe a thing he says. What I would love for him is to be honest. And I, but I just don't think it's, it'll happen. I just don't think he's capable. That contractor, Potts Blame, says he's not responsible for any of the messed up buses. He says he only supplied laborers who worked at Potts' warehouse under Potts' direction. Several customers say they're now stuck with unlivable buses. They don't even feel comfortable selling because of all the electrical hazards. On the legal front, Potts has already lost one customer lawsuit to the tune of $26,000, and he has paid that judgment. But despite other cases being filed, Potts insists that he's one of the best schoolie builders out there. And on Friday afternoon, he started supplying us with the names of what he says are happy and satisfied customers. We're currently confirming that information. We'll let you know what we find out. Well, health experts are encouraging masks again as cases around the country are rising. The latest on COVID and what the White House is now doing about it. With cases of COVID rising across much of the country, the Biden administration is already looking ahead, trying to prepare for another COVID surge as we look to the fall and winter seasons. According to the CDC, more than 100,000 new cases are being reported every day. Health experts say this latest surge is due in part to new variants and subvariants, some of which are increasingly contagious. The CDC saying vaccinations are key here. The Biden administration hoping to secure COVID funding from Congress. One of the reasons I've been talking a lot about the need for Congress to step up and fund this effort is if they don't, we will go into the fall and winter without that next generation of vaccines, without treatments and diagnostics. That's going to make it much, much harder for us to take care of and protect America. Meanwhile, with the recent spike in COVID cases and hospitalizations, health officials are once again urging everyone to wear masks indoors. In Philadelphia, beginning tomorrow, children in classrooms will be required to mask up, but New York City Mayor is standing firm, not reinstating an indoor mask mandate. We'll be right back. I cannot get over how beautiful it was today and when it started. I mean, just cool temperatures outside. You could enjoy your coffee. Yeah. It was a nice day. Didn't feel like you were in the broil setting of the oven. Exactly. No. <laughs> it, it was funny when I was leaving for work and I opened the door to the garage. I was I was prepping for the like the blast. blast. Right. Exactly. And I was like, oh. I was like, is this, this is how nice. the rest of the country lives? Like <laughs> late spring, early summer? Yeah, <laughs> sometimes they have to deal with snow. Ask Denver. That's true. Yeah, <laughs> poor Denver, all that snow this weekend. Uh, yeah, today felt great. And our high temperature was two degrees below average. And this is the first day this month that that has happened. Every other day since the 1st of May, our high temperature has been above average. And we tied and set several new records in that span as well. So today was quite a change, but it was a really nice change. Things are quiet across Texas tonight. Of course, we've got storm chances in the forecast the next couple of days, but I want to fill you in on something that's happening in the Gulf of Mexico across the central Gulf. See this little, little counterclockwise spin here, this precipitation and cloud cover approaching the Alabama Gulf Coast and the Florida Panhandle. Well, the National Hurricane Centers had its eye on this little area of low pressure, gave it very low odds of becoming at least a tropical depression in the next 48 hours. It's running out of time. It's practically moving on shore right now. But this is just a reminder that the start of hurricane season is very close. It begins on June 1st. So we've got that little disturbance in the Gulf. Nothing else going on in the Atlantic Basin at this time, but just a little remind you, reminder for you that hurricane season is not far away at all. Meanwhile, here at home, our rain chances have nothing to do with the tropics, rather just an unsettled weather pattern that will bring us periods of showers and thunderstorms over the next three days. Now, each day is not going to be a complete washout, but at times, 
there could be rain around. So let's dig into the forecast one more time again, quite across Texas tonight. Uh, and that's how things will stay through the overnight hours. I can't rule out a few little sprinkles or a spotty shower early tomorrow morning, but really no big issues. First half of the day on Monday. It's the afternoon and evening hours that our storm chances will start to pick up. And again, don't stay locked into these specific times on this future cast model. I kind of just want you to get an idea of how the storms will develop, where they'll develop and how they'll play out through the evening and nighttime hours. So by tomorrow afternoon, we'll look out to the west across northern Mexico and also out into other parts of West Texas for storms to fire up. Depending on exactly when they fire up, that'll give us a much better idea of specific timing as to when they could start to get closer to Highway 281 and the I-35 corridors. But we expect storms to develop out to the west tomorrow afternoon and then they'll progress east through the late afternoon and evening hours. We could have some storms around the San Antonio metro area close to sunset. If they form a little bit later, it could be later into the nighttime hours. This is something that we'll have to watch how these storms develop and play out. But just know your storm chances begin to pick up in the afternoon and they'll be highest through the evening and nighttime hours on Monday. Also keep in mind scattered severe thunderstorms will be possible around San Antonio Bear County up I 35 to New Braunfels and also west along Highway 90 all the way out to Del Rio and the Hill Country. Again, with the storms developing off to the west, they'll be strongest here as they move east. And then as they approach I-35 late tomorrow night, uh, they should lose a lot of their gusto where isolated severe weather is possible south and east of San Antonio tomorrow. We could have some more severe storms as we get into Wednesday. So another few days here where it'll be important to stay up to date with the forecast and the weather team will keep you updated via the weather app. Another look at your day tomorrow, 68, the morning low. Again, your storm chances really start to pick up as we get into the afternoon and evening hours tomorrow. High temperatures uh, mid to upper 80s for your Monday. Again, rainfall potential through the next couple of days will be a lot of spots, one to two inches of rain. Some locally higher rainfall totals will be possible. And of course, that's really good news because we've got quite the drought situation on our hands. Tim Lee. All right, Katie, thank you. Mm -hmm. Bring on that rain. We'll be right back. The psychological horror film Men debuted in fifth place with $3.3 million. $3.9 million gave Sonic the Hedgehog 2 fourth place and a domestic total of $181 million. The Bad Guys got away with $6.1 million for a third place finish. Apparently they're making the wrong sort of film. Downton Abbey A New Era debuted in second place with $16 million. Three in a row for Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. The mystical Marvel movie retained the box office crown with a weekend haul of $31.6 million, giving it a domestic total of $342 million. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Who wins the PGA Championship in Oklahoma as Tiger Woods withdraws from the final round? And the Spurs' Lonnie Walker on hand to honor a wounded veteran at the Missions game. Let's find out what else is on tonight for instant replay by heading over to the man, Greg Simmons. I thought that was pretty cool he showed up for that big event. And who's left in the high school baseball plows, including the showdown between the Reagan Rattlers and the Smiths and Valley Rangers? And who's bringing home another state title in softball? Coming up tonight on a brand new edition of Instant Replay. We played all week, really to win and now this is just what is this yeah look he doesn't know what to do the final round of the pga championship played out today in oklahoma but it had to go to a playoff who's bringing home the major title and the spurs lonnie walker the fourth is on hand as a missions honor one of our wounded veterans The Reagan Rattlers have moved on in the high school baseball playoffs after they were able to eliminate the Smiths and Valley Rangers and the Holy Cross Knights, bringing home the state softball title again following a no-hitter. All that plus our exclusive interview with Aggies head football coach Jimbo Fisher less than a day after his explosive press conference following Alabama head coach Nick Saban's accusation. And when will SAFC be able to reschedule their match against Colorado Springs switchbacks after COVID postponed the showdown between the top two teams in the Western Conference? We'll find out. Instant Replay is live, and it is next. Lots to stay tuned for. Thanks, It'd be Frank. fine. All right. <laughs> we'll be right back. 
Thanks so much for joining us. We're out of time. An all new instant replay starts right now. Welcome to a brand new edition of Instant Replay. One day after his explosive press conference in College Station, we sit down with Texas A&M head football coach Jimbo Fisher in an exclusive interview that got a little contentious. It's after Alabama head coach Nick Saban claimed the Aggies bought every player in the nation's best recruiting class, beating out the Crimson Tide. But first. Right, San Antonio Spurs have a franchise changing draft coming up on June the 23rd. That's after they were awarded the ninth overall pick in the NBA draft lottery this past week. With former number one draft pick David Robinson on hand in Chicago, the Spurs had a four and a half percent chance of landing the number one overall pick for the third time in franchise history. With just over a 20 percent chance of landing in the top four. As the odds had it, they wound up with a number nine pick overall. Still not bad when you consider the Spurs will have three draft picks in the first round with a number 20 pick from Toronto, number 25 from Boston in the trade for Derek White. The Admiral was pleased. I think we're, you know, we're, we're well positioned and, and you know, we'll, we have an unbelievable team and I, I think that uh, we're going to find a great pick at nine. With, with talent like today and especially with some of these young guys, you don't even really know what you have. I mean, you know, we got lucky last year with Josh Primo, who's a super talented uh, young guy, and I don't even think anybody knew much about him before that. And so I think there are, um, there are countless number of guys who, who are woefully underrated, and uh, we just have to kind of mine through the field and find those guys. All right, here's a look at their draft selections coming up here in June. In the first round, the 9th, the 20th, and the 25th. In the second round, the 38th overall. That all happened in Brooklyn on Thursday, June the 23rd. Game three of the Western Conference Finals is a must win for the Dallas Mavericks tonight, who return home training the Golden State Warriors two games to none. Golden State takes control early, though. Steph Curry with the fake steps to the side and the three. Warriors go up 19-7 in the first six minutes of play, but the Mavs rally late in the quarter off the turnover. Luka Doncic spins and puts it up at the buzzer. It's good. Dallas trails 25-22 after one. They carry that momentum into the second. Nice move here from Jalen Brunson under the basket for the lay-in. Dallas turns the tables to lead 42-33, but the Warriors rally to lead 48-47 at the half. Third quarter now. Curry comes alive, knocking down another step back three. Golden State up by 10, heading into the fourth, and Andrew Wiggins has a final save with a monster jam. 27 for Wiggins, 31 for Curry. Warriors win it 109-100. So here's a look at the... NBA playoff picture right now. So Dallas now faces a must win for sure on Tuesday to keep from being swept out of the second round of the playoffs. We should say in this case, the Western Conference Finals. And in the Eastern Conference Finals, Boston right now in Miami, you see Heat lead that series two games to one game four is tomorrow, 7.30. That'll be live right here on KSAT 12. Less than 24 hours after Alabama head coach Nick Saban claimed the Texas A&M bought every player in the 2022 recruiting class, beating out the Crimson Tide for the number one recruiting class in the nation. Texas A&M head coach Jimbo Fisher called a news conference the very next morning to answer his former boss's accusation, and it was epic. Up there with Mike Gundy's I'm a man, I'm 40 explosive news conference. Now, here's a sample from College Station on Thursday morning. It's despicable that somebody can say things about somebody and an organ. More importantly, 17-year-old kids. You're taking shots at 17-year-old kids and their families. It's, it's despicable that a reputable head coach could come out and say this when he doesn't get his way or things don't go his way. The narcissist in him doesn't allow those things to happen. And it's ridiculous. But when, when he's not on top, we build him up to be the czar of football. Go dig into his past or anybody that's ever coached with him. You can find out anything you want to find out, what he does and how he does it. And it's despicable. He's the greatest ever, huh? And then I just wanted to. When you got all the advantages, uh -huh. it's easy. And what's funny, in that talk, right before he said that about us, wasn't he soliciting funds from the crowd? It's amazing, wasn't it? To the left, Rob. So when you walk on water, I guess, it don't matter. And I'm going to tell you one thing you can, you can call me anything you want to call me, you ain't calling me a cheat. I don't cheat and I don't lie. Because I learned that when I was a kid. If you did, the old man slapped you side of the head. Maybe somebody should have slapped him. All right, then on the very next day, this past Friday, Jimbo flew to the Alamo City for his annual visit with the San Antonio A&M Club Coaches Night. Armed with new information, breaking news in an exclusive interview that got contentious about halfway through the sit-down talk when Coach Fisher brought out what he had just been told that had a direct impact on what Nick Saban had charged. Because the interview is so long, we divided it into two parts. 
did the name, likeness, and image rule figure in any way at all into your decision to um, expand your contract? Did you give yourself a second thought no. about, do I really want to deal with this no. for that much longer? Or no. is this something you're having to adapt to regardless? And rules are always a change. That had nothing to do with it. And name, image, and likeness, I keep saying this about recruiting. And I just researched this. Of the 11 guys we have in, in place in, that came early, one guy has an NIL deal. Really? Yes. Just one? Just one. So all these stories you're hearing are complete lies. Well, now, because what, what happened over the last 48 hours? So, nothing. And it had never happened before. Because it was written on social media and it started with the Bro Bible Slice Bread deal. Right. So everybody believed it. And Nick, all the people obviously believed it. I went and checked with our compliance people because we have nothing to do with it. One guy. Of the 11? Yes. Of the early enrollees. Of the early enrollees. Gotcha. So that said, what is all this dust up about then? Great point. I, I, I've just got to ask you, were you shocked that this came up because you just told I, me you I only said, had one? I said, that about, I said that about a while ago. It's like, that's why I made the original one back in February when they said we had $35 million in a thing. That's, that's, that's all false. It's all, it's all, it was written on social media so everybody believes it. And you got news channels believing it. Hey, big people believing it. And you believed it. Well, and Nick Saban believed it, obviously. Well, he's not news. You're news. You're media. Do you guys not research? But I, I, I'm asking you, did you, re did you do your research? Uh, you just no, did. no. So you can't answer. So you just assumed. And that's the way this world goes now. As soon as it's written on social media and someone says it, you believe it. So where does that put you as guys as reporters? Where does that put coaches like Nick Saban, who know better, that, if, if that's the case? I, 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 I. Where does that put reporters at? So you're defending Nick Saban? No, I'm just crazy. I'm asking you guys to okay. put it out in the media. <laughs> I'm, I, I, just hold on. I ain't getting into this. Oh, no, no, no. I, I understand. But I just want to, is this change? It, it, it's because social media and media put it out. I got it. Mm -hmm. does, does, you believed it. You just asked me. Sure. Does that change anything? What's it change? No, nothing's just changed in the beginning. Truth. Truth. What's the truth? Nobody wants the truth. You want a story and a click and a hit. Think. What's the next question? See, I threw you off your game right now. Well, no. you're, off, you're off your game. You're out of question. <laughs> not, definitely not out of question. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so how does that change the... That doesn't change the, anything. Because I know the truth and I've always known the truth. That's why... I, then that's why, why would I'm, he make that accusation? You have to ask him. Again. Uh, just let me handle it. Why would he make that accusation, though? If, if it's... Why did, you, why did you make that accusation? I didn't make any accusations. I don't know. You have to ask him. Has he apologized to you at all? No, we haven't talked. And would you accept his public apology? I said we're not talking. But he publicly apologized. Do you accept that? I didn't read it. I don't read social media. We said it on serious accent, but whatever. That's I, didn't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't listen to radio. I don't listen to that. Gotcha. Gotcha. Do you think this is a, of what happened over the last 48 hours, do you think this is a, somewhat of a snapshot of a bigger picture problem? I have no idea. When it comes to the NIL? I have no idea. NIL wasn't a problem. Right. Why are the Aggies so good at this? In other but words... We're not. Oh, you, really? You don't think you guys are more organized and more... No. ...than any other university? Mm -mm. You don't think that would not have been somewhat of a motivation of why he did what he did? I don't know. You have to ask him. Gotcha. Is there anything you'd like to add to the last 48 yeah. hours that have happened here? Yeah, there was one deal. That's one deal. That was it. And those are all. And I checked on that. And I checked on that from our compliance. That's where it goes. And that's all 11 of the early signees. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Now, because the second part of this interview was so timely, we had the first part of our exclusive interview next Sunday right here on Instant Replay. Time now for tonight's Instant Replay poll question. Did the Aggies do anything wrong in signing the best recruiting class of the nation? Vote now. We'll have the results at the end of the broadcast tonight. Plenty of drama for the final round of the PGA Championship at the Southern Hills Country Club in Tulsa. What a charge from Justin Thomas here. He entered the day seven strokes back, pulled within a stroke of the leader, thanks in part to this bunker shot on the par 417. Thomas with a 367 finishes around at five. Under. He finished tied for third. Will Zalatoris was the only one who had a chance to keep pace with Thomas, and he sinks a par putt on 18 to force a three-hole playoff tied at five under. Thomas then took the lead thanks to a birdie on the second hole and sunk this par putt on the final hole to secure the victory. Thomas wins his second career PGA Championship, matched the third largest comeback after 54 holes in a major championship history. Here's a look at the final tally on the final results. Now see both finished tied at five under, but Justin Thomas wins it in the three-hole playoff. Now that Thomas has won two PGA two PGA championships. He was asked whether this major was his favorite to play. 
At this point, any of them is, is great. I, I'm, I don't care which one it is. I mean, you're, you know, as Tom Brady always says, your favorite Super Bowl is your next one, and that's that's what my favorite major is. And at this moment, it's it's definitely this guy right here. All right, up next, the sports guys are talking about Jimbo Fisher and the Aggies, but first. Cavender uh, did more than a terrific job and uh, got Craig Carr, you know, who's a, a war hero, someone that fought for this country, someone that's did more than enough. The Spurs' Lonnie Walker IV stopped by Wolf Stadium to honor one of our nation's veterans. We'll show you how the missions helped out one of our wounded warriors. SAFC postponed their latest match due to COVID. So when could they face Colorado this season? Plus, the latest in the high school baseball and softball playoffs. It includes back-to-back -back state champs from Holy Cross. When Instant Replay continues live next.